during my rodeo days, in the, up on the ranch where I was there for something like 35 years, the Smoky Dawson Ranch in Sydney, I had 85 horses I say, used for film work and I used to do stunting and provide horses for films. One day a horse pulled back and just the, by the rope burner pulled all the skin back off my hand. So I, I had to give away all the barring there and invent new chords. <laughs> and a lot of the guys that try to play along with me, they see the position I've got in reversal and, and I tell them, well, it's in the key of A flat and we might be playing along and they're following, what chord's that? It's all right, don't just play it. I might be up here somewhere or down here. And sometimes I'll get an effect by just, by just holding it up and, and putting all that or one finger there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a minor there. And, and I developed this little song called the Dingo. They go, and I'll get the same effect as these fellas doing all this. See? See? And then I go, and then I go, and the band. Prop. So what I, I've got the effect and it's all I need. I leave the rest to the, to the rhythm section. Oh. All right, let, let me see. Uh, what about now? Uh, I, I know this has probably been um, done over, over and over again because when I wrote this song, I thought I only had five years to go. And I call it working on my five year plan. Now, I think that everybody should have a plan. Mm -hmm. The other day I was on uh, with uh, Doug Mulray, you know, Triple M, with Slim. The first time they've ever had country on a rock station. This is the top station in Sydney. They're starting to come up. We get down there at 8 o'clock in the morning and um, he said get on, eight, on the breakfast session, above all things, to talk about Tamworth. If I can deviate from that too. He said get down at 8 and take the lift at the 4th level and get, and then get out at the 9th and you'll be met there by the, the, the security. It'll take you up to the 25th where the radio station is. So I get there. Slim stayed with some friends overnight, so he got there fairly early. I had to come all the way over to Bondi Junction. I got in, got into the David Jones car park, and uh, <laughs> parked my car, pressed the button of the lift, and it didn't work. Oh, God. So I see a fire escape door. So I walk over this big heavy door and open it, and I thought, I'll walk up the stairs to that level. I don't know what the heck I should have been doing. I was stupid. The moment I, I got inside, I let the door shut and I couldn't open it. Oh, I said, and, and I still didn't think right. I walked up the stairs carrying the guitar. Second, third, got the fourth, fifth. I was on the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, up, up to the ninth. And all these doors on the way out, none of them would open. And then I remember the King Cross fire, you know, where the fire door wouldn't open. I said, I'm going to die. <laughs> Hell, I'm going to asphyxiate. And I've got this phobia. Now I have a little problem, a little thing called a thyroid, borderline low. My doctor suddenly discovered that I wasn't bouncing around as well as I should be. And so he said to me, your thyroid's just about at it. You're below borderline. So he said, I'll, uh, I'll have to give you tablets. No, I said, I'll be all right, I'll be all right. He said, don't you get tired dragging your legs around and going doing all these shows? I said, no, as a matter of fact, I, I was on with Tommy Tico's 36-piece orchestra at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, 12,000 people. Did two shows, just as many of the seconds I've heard. And I did my writing song and a little movie on, and I never felt the thing. I didn't think anything wrong there because my, I was so happy my adrenaline was propping me up. And he said, well, you've definitely got a thyroid. And he said, you know what that means? That's your life. That's your growth. So he said, when you feel your legs starting to get heavy, you get back to me. So I started feeling, noticing it then. So he put me on these little tablets and increased them. 
He said, I'll give you just a little bit of time, because if I gave you straight away to blow you up, what I've got to do is get you down from, I was 79 then, well, then he just discovered this. He said, everything was on the way out, you see? And all the rest of my organs, you know, the, he said, no, the thyroid gland governs all the other glands of the body. It's the Martha gland. And they're, they're all down there, like people are saying, oh, we thought we were supposed to have a sleep, you know? And they're all gone to sleep for years, I wondered why, you know, I wasn't feeling the best. Anyway, when he gave me this tabus, boy, everything started to jump. And all the little guys inside jumped up. Hey, we've got, another, we've got another innings. So I start feeling good. He said, so I've got you down to 50 now. I'm going to bring you down to 30. He's got me on the 100 now. So that's why I'm as good as I am. I don't wear glasses. I can read the finest print. And until I went in there to see Doug Mulray, and yeah, then I suddenly felt my age, 80. <sighs> my legs was heavy, I couldn't walk up the stairs because panic set in and I thought, I'm going to die here. I could, because there was no vent, there was no light, and it's just this grey concrete steps. So I climbed up to about 14 steps and every door I came to on the levels were all shut. You couldn't get through them naturally because they closed behind you. But I couldn't find the outdoor. Of course, it was up on the 20th floor. And I climbed up, and I, the time I got up there, I said, I'm going to die. And I lay down on the steps and tried to prepare myself. And I said, now talk to yourself. Now, come on, Smokey, pull yourself together. Come on, now get your act together. And then I thought, Slim's up there. He's getting in on the act. I won't <laughs> even be there. I won't be there. And they'll say, where's Smokey? My wife won't know where I was. They'll find my car. Nobody saw me come in here. I'm banging on doors, screaming and yelling. And eventually I saw a door. I pushed it and it went out. And it was on the, the next big level. And here was all these loading bays and all these guys looked up and saw this apparition there. Ah, oh, thank God I'm alive. Then I'd suddenly, that I'd left my guitar down the bottom. So I said to God, you hold this door, I'm running down and get my guitar. So down I went, bounding one, four steps at a time. All my life had come back again. Grab my guitar, run up the steps, exhausted. And I said, now where can I get? And he said, there it is, up five more floors, up the top of the, of the shopping complex. So I had to go out in the street again and, and take another lift there. When I got up, the secu security were waiting for me and they said, I wonder where you'd gotten to. So I told them, they said, you're crazy. And I could hardly talk. And then, so when I walked there, here's Doug and Slim standing there waiting for me. So he started bowing salutations, oh master, oh. And he said, we're just putting on the air. Here's Slim and Smokey live, but I don't know whether Smokey will be live by the time he gets here. And he told everybody about this on the air, how the security had found me down the fire escape, gasping for air. And I said, well, it's always been the way. It's always been the way. It's fire escapes. Whatever there's fire, there's smoke. <laughs> so it went on the air. And if so they did a little tape of it. And I noticed that my level was far down below Slim's. I was exhausted. I was going, ha, ah, ah. ha. And he said, what's the song you're going to sing? And I said, five-year plan. He said, you're a communist. <laughs> it's 